at Sussex in second year um, at Sussex in second year that's literally how they mark that so learning how to Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Cheryl. If you're new, welcome to the C-Squad. Over here we cover all things transfer student and living your best life as an international student in the UK. So if you like the sound of that, then hit the subscribe button below. Follow me on Instagram and join the fam. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for joining me again. So one of the most frequently asked questions in my DMs is how do I learn how to code? Where do I start? So today I'm gonna to be giving you guys some tips on how to learn how to code. The first thing we should get into is computer specs because people love asking me like what kind of laptop I recommend and all that stuff. To be honest with you, I'm not like a super techie person, I know. I study computer science. I'm really like not really into tech like that. So the laptop that I have is an HP Pavilion Intel i5 core i5 <laughs> guys i'm really not into tech okay it's an hp pavilion intel core i5 i hope that's correct usually for coding and programming you should probably have an intel i5 cpu if you can get an i7 that is recommended you obviously want to have as much ram as possible so my laptop has 8 gigabytes which is good but if you could get a laptop with 16 gigabytes of ram that would be better then lastly all you need is a laptop with a 1920 by 1080 resolution display okay guys so please stop <laughs> please stop asking me what you need to to program with guys clearly i'm not the one with the with the specs and all that stuff but i did do research and that is what they recommend i've always said you don't need to have anything like super fancy like macbooks or like anything like that i had a lenovo which worked perfectly fine i have the hp now so yeah just try and look out for those specs and you should be good to go once you have your equipment ready the next thing would be to choose a programming language if you guys watched my five things I wish I knew before studying computer science video. If you didn't, it will be linked down below. But basically, I said in that video that you need to become an expert in one language. A lot of us learn the basics of a lot of different languages. So I can code in Java, C++, Python, Haskell, MATLAB, Mathematica. I can go on, like I can literally code in so many things, but very basic functions. So I would say it's not really necessary for you to dip your feet everywhere. Rather just pick one programming language to start on and become an expert in that language before moving on to other languages. As far as what programming languages I recommend, I would probably recommend C++, but I might be a little bit biased. That is what I first learned to program in at FIT. So I, yeah, I think that's a really good beginner programming language. Java in general is also a really good one to start with because it is quite universal. A lot of people know how to code in Java. Some people say Python is easier. I can kind of see how Python might be like the easiest programming language to start with, but just off of my recommendation, I would start with C++. Now, as far as downloading all the things you need for these programming languages, I'm probably not the one to speak to. This semester, we're doing a course called Comparative Programming and we're using Haskell. And for the life of me, I couldn't, like, it just, it didn't want to download or I couldn't make it download or whatever. So uh, usually I would get like people at my university, like I would pay someone to just sort out all like the software stuff or whatever. But I think I would recommend using an online IDE. That's what I'm using with Haskell and it's, yeah, it makes my life a lot simpler. And the great thing about it is that it's all online. So even if, I don't know, you're using someone else's laptop or you're i don't know doing coding at the labs or whatever because it's not saved on like a specific desktop you don't have to transfer files and all that stuff all you can do is just log into the ide online so yeah that is what i would recommend so if you watch my matric revision q a video this will probably sound very similar 
Basically, when it comes to learning anything, I think the easiest way to learn something is to break it down step by step and become really good at each step or each section. So obviously you have a lot of resources available to you online. There are YouTube tutorials. I've seen some videos that are like four hours and are full on, you know, intro to C++ or intro to Java. There's Udemy, which I always talk about. They have very affordable courses. Programming courses can be really expensive, but Udemy definitely has some affordable ones. So I will link them down below for you guys to check out. I have also just found out that Harvard has a computer science course online and it is free unless you want to get a verified certificate. I think that's like $90 or something like that. But for you to learn it, it is completely free. It's the intro to computer science class the cs50 i will definitely link it down below for you guys to check out it covers data structures and algorithms web development software engineering it covers c php html css so it is a pretty good comprehensive course and obviously it's designed by Harvard so I feel like that would be a good place to start. So obviously you have all of these resources available to you. What I would say is break everything into steps. So for example, let's say that you are learning if statements. So I would say learn the syntax, learn what you can do with it, learn what you can't do with it as well and just spend like an entire section of time like whether it's you spend that entire day like that day is if statements day and you just practice different things and see all the different things you can do and manipulate it which is kind of similar to what i've been doing with the comparative programming class so using haskell obviously it's a different syntax and stuff there are different things that you can do with it so whenever we learn a concept i try and see what i can get away with and what i can't and if i get an error i will google the error find out why i can't get it to output what i want it to output so just like literally just mess around and manipulate it until you understand your boundaries as a programmer literally i think one of the most underestimated things is that people think that computer science students like don't use google like guys we literally sit and just use stack overflow we google errors like that's really the only way you'll find out most information is online so if you get stuck always google it there are tons of forums and yeah so after you've learned that topic and you've messed around with it and tried a bunch of different examples i would say then practice it so there are two sites that i really like that have practice kind of coding questions where you basically you just code a program and you submit it to an online marker and it will tell you whether it passed the test cases and how many of those test cases it passed and if you're going to Wits University that is pretty much how they mark IAP which is introduction to algorithms and programming I think I don't know um, so yeah so that's literally how they mark that at Sussex in second year compilers and computer architecture is marked with an online marker so it is really great practice to get used to just having test cases on your program so the two that I really like are Leech Code and Code Abbey. I think I've done more on Code Abbey. That's the one I would say I'm most familiar with. But Lead Code is also really good, and there are a bunch of others online if you just look around for them. Now, one thing you really need to know about coding is that it's it's a skill. Do you know what I mean? Like if you decide I want to learn how to dance, you're going to have to practice dancing for you to get good or even with singing or with art or whatever. It's not something where you can just sit down and you have a four hour tutorial and you're just gonna sit down one day and learn four hours of coding. That's not going to work. It is something that you are going to have to practice regularly and be consistent with because if you're not consistent and you don't program for, I don't know, five months, when you come back, it's pretty much gonna be like you're starting from the beginning. 
and yeah that's just not great so try and be consistent i'm not saying you have to code every single day but every couple of days once a week do you know what i mean so yeah try and be consistent but i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know what you think of my tips be sure to like comment and subscribe to join the c squad and hit that notification bell to be notified when i upload new videos i post every wednesday and sunday at 5 p.m london time i'll see you guys in my next video bye Bye.